welcome to Wi-Fi Matters. Um, I hope you guys all had a nice weekend, maybe watched some fireworks and hung out with your families, had a good barbecue or something fun like that. Um, But today I wanted to talk to you about something I did last week. So after months of waiting, I was finally able to open a bank account. And I know that may not seem exciting, but I need to tell you, it was really hard to actually do it. Since I had to go to a brick and mortar bank and due to our good friend COVID-19, I was not able to actually go to the bank until about a week ago. Plus, I needed to schedule a time when one of my parents was available to take me because I can't open a bank account by myself. Um, But it's nice to know that now I don't have to store my money in a kitchen cupboard. One thing, though, is I wasn't even able to put my money into a savings account because the interest rate on the amount I had would have generated only a couple cents a year. So instead, I just made a pretty safe choice and put my money into a checking account. And this is good for me because now I'm able to track my money and make sure it's being kept safe, but also I can spend it in a safe way. Everybody should be able to have a bank account, but it's extremely rigid, not easily accessible, and it's complicated and a tedious process to actually get one. This is why I wanted to talk about financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is defined as the availability and equality of opportunities to access to financial services. Um, According to the World Bank, There are around 1.7 billion people in the world who are unbanked. So these people, they have no access to a bank account, so they can't borrow money for colleges. They have to store their cash literally under their pillows. And if you keep your money at home, it's just not safe. You can't grow your money and you can't get loans. So this right here is one of the perpetuators of poverty. Also, women are overrepresented among the world's unbanked. According to CGAP, there are about 980 million women who don't have access to an account, and this makes up 56% of all unbanked adults globally. Also, those who are underbanked are disproportionately young between the ages of 15 and 24. But let's be honest, how many of us really want to go to a bank? I would say yes, but that's only when I was a toddler, because when I would go to the bank, they always offered me free candy and lollipops, so that was fun. But right now, so many people in the world, especially millennials, would rather go to their dentist than a bank. So in the past few years, we have been going through one of the biggest transformations in financial service history, the fintech revolution. It's the innovative use of technology for the delivery and design of financial services. So here's a question. Why did fintech emerge? Well, millennials were essentially the driver for the fintech revolution. Basically, millennials wanted access to simple but efficient financial services at their fingertips and from the convenience of their homes. Fintech is able to close the gap between a rigid and painfully slow financial service system to a more efficient, quote, mobile phone app using on-the-go, unquote, financial service. And also, to sum it up, in 2008, there was this financial crisis. I don't know if you've heard of it, but basically so many banks, they had to drift their focus from focusing um, on innovation and finding cool new ways to design and deliver their service to paying fines and solving out all of those issues related to the crisis. But right around this time, there were big companies like PayPal, Apple, Google, Amazon, who were making things easier and accessible and efficient. So like most Gen Z's, I take fintech for granted. I have been using fintech my whole life without ever knowing that the history and importance behind it. Personally, I use fintech in the forms of payments, crowdfunding, and investing. Fintech payment is something we all use. I'm not even sure how we would be able to survive without contactless payment like PayPal, Venmo, QuickPay, etc. 
it's so cool to see how some of the older generation are, are actually catching on because, you know, my tutor preferred cash or a check after a tutoring session. Um, but as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, this option was no longer possible and we were not able to pay her. But she finally got one of the, those online um, payment options through her bank called Zelle. So it was easier to send her money virtually. She even said it herself, quote, COVID-19 makes us update our banking system as well. We just made it happen even though we are old school, unquote. This is the magic of fintech. Um, I also use, uh, well, for investing, I use a teen-friendly investment app called Stockpile. Um, while investing and building up your por portfolio, they also have these lessons so you can, quote, master the market. Um, they have a lot of options to invest in. So this is very good for diversification. And I really recommend checking this app called Stockpile if you're interested in starting to invest. Um, another financial technology I use is GoFundMe. And what I like about this crowdfunding platform is that they have justice and equality funds. So for advocates and activists, especially for younger the younger generation, we can have an impact by creating these funds to fight inequality. Besides these, there are um, other forms, other branches of fintech, like digital banking, insure tech, cryptocurrency and blockchain, peer-to-peer um, -peer lending, and reg tech. But I'm not going to go into all of this nitty gritty of all these other um, forms of fintech because personally, I don't have much experience about these other areas, but hopefully I will be able to interview experts on these various topics for future um, podcast episodes. Also, back to my starting a bank account saga, most traditional banks now are investing into fintech and offering online options as well as using some apps to help with their online checking. And I'm actually currently using that right now. Um, but digital banking is going to be the future of banking. Um, for example, N26 is a neo bank or a digital bank. Uh, it's based in Germany, but it was launched in the US around six months ago. And they use Axon Bank and they're an FDIC insured bank. Their tagline is, quote, sign up in five minutes and fast, flexible, and transparent, unquote, which is very intriguing for a bank. This is relatively new, like um, digital banking and N26, but I'm going to be watching them and other digital banks such as Simple, Chime, um, they're both available in the U.S., um, very closely, and I might transition to them maybe in the future. So what are the benefits of fintech? A huge benefit, which I talked a little bit about before, is how fintech simplifies so much of the tiresome banking processes because it's very fast and convenient. Um, also, COVID-19, the pandemic, has really highlighted the importance of using fintech to keep financial systems functioning by keeping people safe while following the physical and social distancing rules. Another benefit is that fintech can contribute to poverty reduction. Poverty reduction is not only bringing people out of poverty, but also helping them grow their business so they can invest in education. So in this sense, people not only survive, but they can thrive. For example, in India, there are a lot of street vendors who are using fintech to make payment transactions. A lot of these street vendors are using Square. You know, the you might recognize it as the little white credit card reader that attaches to your cell phone and you just swipe it. So customers can pay for their product um, in this way. So FinTech, they, it helps a lot of these local vendors create a living. Also, what's really cool about this digital revolution is that it's paving the way for other types of delivery for essential services, such as water, or solar energy, and even education to remote areas and poorer communities. With technology, however, comes risk. So let's talk about some of the risks of fintech. How many of you have experienced rash decision making online? I have. With a lot of fintech, all you have to do is just click a button. So in a lot of cases, some people can make rash and quick and uninformed financial decisions. 
Um, also, there are a lot more security and safety questions surrounding fintech as your privacy and personal data can be hacked and you can fall victim to cybercrime. So a lot of fintech and tech companies, they're focusing their efforts right now on like solving the security issue of fintech. So going back to financial inclusion, what are the benefits of financial inclusion? As you can see, going to the bank gave me a whole lot to think about. Financial inclusion is just so important if we want everyone to have a chance to achieve what they want in life. The United Nations, they acknowledge the importance of financial inclusion in accomplishing the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Um, but you might be asking why financial inclusion matters. Well, financial inclusion helps people step out of poverty. It not only helps individuals on a personal level, but can also contribute to economic growth. And what financial inclusion can really do is empower people. They empower people by giving people the ability and tools to save and manage their money and make smart financial decisions that will benefit their futures. According to the 2017 Global Findex database, between 2014 and 2017, the share of adults who have an account with a financial institution or through a mobile money service using fintech rose globally from 62% to 69%. In developing economies, the share rose from 54% to 63%. So, through the use of fintech, we are closer to accomplishing these goals as it's a huge step towards financial inclusion. So thanks for listening to today's episode. And I just wanted to say I really got into learning about fintech because I'm going to be speaking at GirlCon Chicago on Friday, July 24th at 4.15 p.m. Central Time. GirlCon Chicago is a convention for you to meet and learn from some amazing, incredible girls and women about how technology impacts every career field, whether it be science, fashion, law, or finances, or anything you're ba basically passionate about. But this year, due to the COVID-19 crisis, um, it's going to be virtual. So you don't have to come and tra travel and fly to Chicago. All you need is a laptop and registration is completely free. So um, um, registration information is going to be um, in my episode description. So please come check out my session and I would really love your support. And you can learn more about FinTech. So thank you so much for listening today um, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next time.